head. It's gone! It's gone! Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Learning by Doing channel here. Vernon, Marie, and we are back in Raja Ampat. Surprise, surprise. For those of you guys who have been watching us for a while, you know that we've made quite a few videos here. We've done a big loop in the last year and a half. We'll show you here, basically all through eastern and central Indonesia. And we've made it back to Raja Ampat. Anyway, today's video, we are going in search of Kali Biru. It's the Blue River. We tried to find it a couple of years ago, but pretty unsuccessful. So we're going to go back and try and find it. It's about 15 miles sail east and then up this amazing looking gorge. It looks like you're going to meet pterodactyls and all sorts of dinosaurs. It's pretty crazy. And then, yeah, then we go up a river in the dinghy and, um, well, first we'll anchor up in this big bay and then we'll go up a river in a dinghy and, and try and find this place. Uh, it's pretty incredible looking, so we want to show you that. And yeah, hopefully we find it. Anyway, enjoy our search. You're looking like you just woke up. Yeah, it's early morning and I had a good night, but yeah, it's hard to wait this day, I don't know why. So how are you liking being back in Raja Ampat? Oh, that's amazing. Like, the first time I came here, I, I, I appreciate a lot Raja Ampat, but I, I don't remember that I was thinking to stay here or living here. And after this world trip in Indonesia, being back here, it, such a good feeling. I'm feeling almost home. It, everything is easy here. I like how people are acting. It's easy to find everything we need. And I don't know, the, the smells of the jungle, the light, the sunlight, everything is really special. Rajampat is really like my favorite place, I would say. Even if I love Indonesia for the different you can find every island, but there's something here that I really appreciate. Try and catch a fish today. It's pretty early in the morning, so it could be a good time. I made up a new fishing line the other day. I tried to put a bit of effort into making a better one because I've been losing a few lures and that lately. Well, I lost the whole fishing rod, to be honest. I went overboard. And I put it Put a bungee, build a bungee, there's a 150 pound line, build a bungee into it to stop the shock loading. Yeah, so that's my line. Trying our luck to have some fish, maybe for the dinner. I was just having to pee off the back of the boat. We've got zero wind by the way, we're just motoring, but uh, and I saw we've got a bunch of hitchhikers with us. We must have bought them from our last anchorage. Yeah, well, look. got something on the line. Check it out. Uh, it might just be a bag. It might be a plastic bag. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really look too much like a fish from here, but it's not fighting. Let's see. I was catching something. That doesn't look like a plastic bag. It looks like... No, no, it's a fish. I think I see the mouth. It sort of looks like a fish, but it's not fighting. But like Spanish mackerel do that actually, once they get their gills out of the water, they don't fight until they get on the boat. Yeah, that's, oh, that's it is a fish. <laughs> oh, it's quite a decent one. It's like last one, I think. No, it's small. But it's the perfect size for eating, I think. Yeah, it is. Let's step back a little bit. Oh, it's a small one, but it's a good one. Yoohoo! There you go. Hello. Welcome to the boat. Well, uh, it's not really happy to be here. It's but not it's saying it. welcome. But thank you to be our dinner because we don't have meat anymore. Here we 
They're a good sized little fish. They're small as, but good. So the brain shot. Well, that was fast. Had the hooks in the water maybe 15 minutes and like really next to town. And it's, to be honest, it's a perfect size for us. That's about three decent meals of fillets for us. And uh, Spanish mackerel, the easiest thing, no scales. Fillets just come right off. There's hardly any left over. Their heads are super small, so there's just mostly meat. A lot of reef fish just have a big head on them and they're not much fillet area, whereas these things are just all meat. Amazing. Look at this beautiful big fillet of fish. Fresh as you can get. Still motoring guys? Well, we haven't stopped motoring. It's been zero, zero wind today, flat calm. But it hasn't been very far. We've only come about 15 miles from Waisai where we anchored last night and uh, where we stocked up with food and stuff uh, yesterday. We didn't need much though because we'd only been in Sarong and got um, fuel and Sarong is the city, uh, it's about 50 miles from here and that's where they have the biggest supermarket and proper fuel stations and all that. So we did a big chock up there, filled up with everything, got some luxuries, found some cheese. Yeah, it was Marie's birthday a few days ago so we got a bunch of good cheese there and some wine and uh, yeah we got a bit of good stuff in Sarong but anyway yesterday we just got some fresh fruit basically we got some um, mangoes and bananas and some vegetables and yeah so we're going into this big bay now I'll show you a Google Earth picture here it's called Maya Liebert Bay and it's this big inland sea and it's only about seven meters deep the whole big sort of lake thing but there's only this tiny little narrow entrance we're going to go through and so you've got to time it right with the tides because it's very uh, strong currents it gets get ripped through here because that whole little lake inside is all going to empty out every tide uh, luckily at the moment I'm not sure what the moon is but the tides are very well really weird at the moment here last night there was a four hour tide today there's a seven hour tide but it only goes 20 centimeters up and down and then Tomorrow there's like a six hour tide again, but it goes up two meters. So it's super weird rhythms here. And um, I'm not sure how accurate the timetables actually are. But I have noticed we just got a knot faster motoring as we turned into this little waterway here. So yeah, I'll fly the drone as we fly through the really narrow part. There's a little village we're coming up to soon called, oh, I can't remember. I'll write it here anyway. There's lots of weird names. This is actually the people who live up in Mylebit Bay are the original, original people from Raja Ampat. Most of the other people from Raja Ampat have all come here in the last 40, 50 years from, from either Biak or from Java, the more western parts of Indonesia. So these are original and real original people from here. They have their own languages and there's five villages up in this bay. Zero tourism up here. We did a few videos there at a place called Warimak. That's where we did the little art competition with the school and the girl won it and I raised money for the school through selling t-shirts. Here's a link up there to those videos. So we know this bay, but we've never been to this river. Anyway, we're getting closer and it's extremely hot. We just turned into this waterway and the temperature just went up about 10 degrees. It's sunny and zero wind and 98% humidity I would guess and probably about 40 something degrees it is it, it Doesn't matter if you're in the Sun or the shade you just can't get away from this heat So it's going to be nice if we find this river because it's going to be really cool Mountain water, I think So we were trying this little bay close to the entry of the river It's quite good. It's 11 meters. So we're gonna be out of the current and quite beautiful landscape all around with all this jungle and super close up the river. I think it's the perfect place to, plan, to spend the night. Oh, I'll go and drop the anchor. Yeah, this looks like an awesome spot. As I said before, the current rips up and down this narrow waterway, but in here, it's off the side of that, so there's really no current. Babe, maybe motor back out that way a bit. Yeah, just um, by the time I put the anchor down, we're gonna be really close to that wall over there. Just go until it's 15 or something. We are 15. Alright. Yeah, we're probably good. Neutral now is good. 
Yeah, it's perfect. The birds up in the jungle here sound fantastic. Once we turn all the engine off, it's going to be pretty amazing here, I think. So I just dropped about 25 meters, which isn't much, you know, it's not much, but um, we're just pulling back slowly now and I'll drop some, feed some more chain out. All right, so it's about 55 meters out now and we're in about 15 meters of water so it should be plenty we'll just pull back on it now and uh, sit here and make sure we're good for a little while and then we'll jump in the dinghy and go and search for this bloody elusive river okay we're all anchored up here in this tiny nice little bay and uh, we're going to go and check out this well we're going to try and find this river but no adventurer ever went somewhere on an empty stomach although we're probably not successful on an empty stomach so our legendary cook here is throwing together something awesome to have before we go explorationing. What are you cooking here, Pope? Um, I'm doing fish soup, um, probably with some noodles in. With the fresh mackerel we had, I'm gonna cut some pieces that I'm gonna throw at the end to not overcook it. And in this pot, I put some eggplants, I'm gonna put some tomatoes, some cabbage, and I have this amazing thing that you can find almost everywhere in Indonesia, but I would say they are more big than various in Raja Ampat. Uh, they call that the bumbu, who's like an ar aromat thing. It's uh, just to give taste. And you've got lemongrass, uh, curcuma, ginger, galangal, some chili, uh, kaffir leaves. Beautiful. Here are the fish soup and the final touch, tiny bit of lime juice. It's ready. Mm -hmm. Alright, enjoy. Thanks for cooking. You're welcome. Thanks, Thank to, thanks to the ocean for this fresh Spanish mackerel. Yeah, after all this time without fishing anything else than plastic, quite happy. We caught two fish in the last couple of weeks with one lure. What an amazing accomplishment. All right, we're going to get stuck in and then go adventuring. See you there. super blue and from the other side it's super brown it's mixing here it's quite amazing all right so we couldn't get further up the river there it's just really shallow rapids it's actually high tide at the moment so you can never get further up than this but we're just going to pull the dinghy up here on this this bank and then just hike up the river i guess and keep going until we find something Right, this is quite a track now so we're on the right track we're not the first people to be here but uh look here's a bunch of local kids coming hello hello high five high five you did we find it yeah we found it and to be honest we were thinking it was such a big thing so we spent half of a day the other time looking around no sign having no idea of where to go and today we saw some people they told us the direction 
and we saw some sculpture things and we follow a truck and in fact it's super easy to come and it's so wonderful. Check it out. This color, come on. It's not even real. Amazing, huh? You gonna jump right in? Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. So what's it called? Calibiru, the Blue River. Wonder why? I'm gonna dive in straight from here. Hopefully it's deep enough. It's gonna be a trauma. It's gonna be a trauma, she says. It's a very big difference in temperature. Get this, Teespring, there's a link below. It's pretty awesome. There's a little, uh, where's the saying, on this side? Huge occlusion. Huge I'm gonna have some huge occlusion, apparently. Well, if I. serious thing, baby. Well, what am I gonna do, faint? No, you can die. I'm not gonna die from diving into water. The temperature is super different. Touch the water with your neck before doing that. With my neck? Yeah, you could do with your neck. Come on. Ah, these French people have some weird ideas. Okay. Go cold. Oh, look how blue it is. So crazy. Pretty crazy in here. The the color of the water obviously is, well, especially you guys at home, but all together with the, the atmosphere and the jungle here and the smells and all the birds, insects and everything. And it's sort of like a clay and pebbly bottom, like white stones as well. It's yeah. freaking incredible here. This is one of the best things we've seen today, for sure. Paradise place. Yeah, super nice. You gonna go and dive in now? No. Come on. <laughs> she doesn't like diving. She gets hydroclusion. No, I like to dive, but not when it's cool like this. My head is super happy to be out of the right, water. Let's put it in. Baby. Tu m'énerves. <laughs> that means you're the best boyfriend in the world. <laughs> no. How's your head? It's cold! It's cold! I'm walking up now. I'm going to go up the river and see if I can find where it comes out of the ground. It could be it's just a spring or it could be it comes... It's got to be a spring actually to be this clear, so I'm going to see if I can find the uh, source of it. But look at this. So literally it just comes out of the mountain right here. It's all limestone rock here and I guess that's why it just comes from somewhere and filters it out through all this limestone rock and it's all just coming out from different little holes all through here. Pretty amazing. We just pulled up anchor and uh, are heading out of this place, Mylebit Bay. Had a great night's sleep. It was a nice cool breeze. I don't know if it was coming down the river, but wow, it was really cool. We had to have a blanket on, which is pretty unusual here. Anyway, I hope you liked that video, guys. A little update I want to give you. Yeah, obviously back in Rajampat, we're not going to stay here very long. Uh, Marie will be going back to Europe probably by the time this video comes out. 
Um, she'll spend two or three months in Europe seeing family, doing a bit of work, seeing some friends, just enjoying uh, something different. She's been here, well, by the time she goes back, we would have been here 12 months on the boat, and that's, um, that's quite a lot. Um, we both need a bit of a break from yeah, a little bit each other and just, you know, uh, she, you know, she's missing her family and all that sort of stuff. So it's only healthy. It's real good. Good for us. Uh, in the meantime, I'll probably be sailing down to Darwin, I think. Um, it, I think as of right now, there's no quarantine needed in Darwin for arrivals. Um, so that suits me. And this boat just needs hauling out and doing proper amount of work on it every week there's something else I see that needs doing and Marie's never been in Australia I want to show her parts of Australia and then we want to sail to New Zealand I've never sailed in New Zealand so that's sort of the plan for the next couple of years in Darwin I would like to paint the hull and maybe the top sides obviously I've got to do all the anti-fouling but that's what I want to talk to you guys about I believe in uh, skill sharing it's a bit of a lifestyle here in Indonesia as well the barter system you know you catch catch two fish you give one to some other guy and then he gives you some papayas or whatever in return I like that way I don't like giving all my money to tax to the government for them to just bloody, I don't know do what whatever with um, so yeah skill sharing is there any of you out there that are or know of people who know how to paint boats or cars maybe or vans or trucks I don't know just people who know how to paint because I don't know how to paint properly. I tried painting the cockpit and it was a bit of a disaster. I'd like the hull to look good. So anyway, if there's anyone out there that would be interested in helping out, I mean, obviously I would help, you know, I would do the work as well. Um, we could do some skill sharing. You show me how to paint, help me make this boat look beautiful again. And uh, I can teach you how to sail and take you a couple of weeks in the Kimberleys or something like that. Or photography, filming, drone flying, anything like that, any things that I'm a sort of specialist at, we could um, do a bit of a trade, you know, that could be pretty cool. So if you do know of somebody or yourself, hit me up in the comments, I'll definitely get back to you, I reply to every comment anyway. So yeah, um, that would be in Darwin in uh, probably in April, something like that, April, May. So yeah, that could be an interesting way to, um, you know, get both of us learning and learning by doing, that's how it works. Anyway, I'd like to say a big thank you to patrons once again, PayPal as well. Last month was a real good um, PayPal month. A couple of people put in a really generous amount, which helps us out a lot, and we don't need that right now, that money. Um, life here is pretty cheap, but hauling out in Darwin is going to be very expensive. It's going to uh, kill the, the savings account a little bit, but, you know, the boat needs the love. Got to spend the money. So, yeah. Once again, thank to all the supporters out there who, who are um, you know, liking what we're doing and supporting the work we're putting into these videos. See you again next week. We've got some cool adventures coming up here where I'm really, really like, putting the time in to make some good stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video too. See you next week.